Hello everyone, in this video we will be discussing the chain rule. So the chain rule allows us to deal with compositions of functions. So we recently went over the product rule and quotient rule, which obviously allow us to deal with products and quotients, uh, but we have no way to deal with functions that look like this. So that's what the chain rule is for. And the chain rule says that the derivative of f of g of x is f prime of g of x times g prime of x. So the way that you will want to think of this, or that I usually think of this, is take the derivative of the outside, right, and we plug in the inside. And by outside and inside there, I mean outside function f and inside function g. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So that's all fine and good, but like, why, why does this even work, right? Why is this true? Okay, so let's, let's get some intuition for what's going on here. So I'm going to let y be f of g of x. And so by the chain rule, y prime is f prime of g of x, g prime of x. And here, I'm just going to call this inside u. So u is g of x and y is f of u here. And so this allows me to just kind of lump the whole inside and call it u. Um, so let's, let's just do an example with some actual numbers here to see what's going on. So let's suppose f prime of u, or you can think of this as dy du, is 3. And we'll say that g prime of x, or uh, du dx, is 2. So what does this mean? Well, again, derivative is slope, right? Or rate of change. And so one way you can think of this is that, you know, y changes three times as fast as u. And simultaneously down here, we'll have that like u changes twice as fast or two times as fast as x, right? That's just kind of reinterpreting these derivatives that this is the rate of change of y with respect to u and uh, u with respect to x. So if you think about this, right, so if y changes three times as fast as u and u changes two times as fast as x, well, just kind of using the transitive property there, we get that y changes six times as fast as x, right? And that's exactly six times as fast as x, and that's exactly the product here. But what is that? Well, that's exactly f prime of u times g prime of x, aka, since u is g of x, this is exactly f prime of g of x times g prime of x. And so this is kind of an idea of what's going on there. And this Leibniz notation actually maybe seems nicer because what you would really see here with the product is that dy du times du dx is dy dx. And this is basically the Leibniz way of thinking of the chain rule. And there, again, these are not literally fractions, so you can't just cancel. But this is the case where you can kind of pretend that cancellation is going on here, right? So like the chain rule kind of makes this uh, fractional math that you want to be able to do actually kind of work out. So let's look at some examples. So the first one I want to do is just to show the order matters, namely if you have f of g of x versus uh, g of f of x, you're going to be getting different things. So like, you know, product rule, we don't really care, uh, but composition, we definitely do. So let's look at uh, tangent squared x and tangent of x squared. So the way I like to do this is to just get my f and g. So here I'm actually going to go ahead and erase this because I want to think of these both in terms of f of g of x. It's just that we're going to have different f and g. So if I want to put this in f of g of x form, then I want to think what is my outside, what is my inside, right? So my inside function here so if I'm taking tangent and then squaring it, squaring is like the second thing happening. That's my outside function. And the thing plugging into the squaring is my inside. So my g of x is tangent. And then once I plug tangent in, I'm squaring it. So my f of x is x squared. Over here, 
we have the opposite going on, right? So x squared is my inside function, that's my g of x here, and then I'm taking tangent afterward, that is my outside function. So if I look at the two derivatives, so d dx of tan squared x is going to be f prime of g of x. So f prime is going to be 2x, but instead of x, I plug in g of x. So I get 2 tangent x, and then times the derivative g prime, which is secant squared x. So that would be that one. And then over here, if we have tangent of x squared, so f prime here is secant squared. But again, we don't plug in x, we plug in the inside function. So it's secant squared, not of x, but of x squared, times derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So these are our two different functions, and these are indeed different. Let's look at a couple more examples here. So let's take y to be e to the sine of 2x power. So in this case, we actually have kind of a double chain rule going on. So the first thing you should notice is that your most outside function is e. And we're plugging in our inside function of sine of 2x. But then even within this, right, this is the inside the inside function, right? So we kind of have two steps of chain rule. We have the chain rule on the outside where we have e and sine of 2x, and then we have the chain rule on sine of 2x where sine is the outside function and 2x is the inside function. So when I'm doing this, it's not always helpful to like, you know, f of g of h of x and like keep breaking it down. For me, I just kind of work um, one step at a time. So I look at my outermost function, so derivative of the outside, that's going to be e, and derivative of e to the x is itself, right? But again, instead of plugging in x, we plug in the whole inside function. So you actually just get back e to the sine of 2x times the derivative of the inside, and the inside here is sine of 2x. And so now I'm going to have to do a second chain rule here. So we have to do the chain again. And so when we go into the next step, so this e to the sine of 2x hangs around. And then what's this derivative? So derivative of my outside, outside is sine, so that's gonna be cosine. But again, we don't plug in x, we plug in our inside, 2x. And then times the derivative of 2x, which is just going to be two. And this is a fine you know, form to, to leave that in. Uh, and let's do one more. So let's do, say, the square root of the natural log of 2x squared plus 3x. So this is somewhat similar. Again, like the outermost is going to be the square root, right, which you can view as like x to the 1 half, right? Square root of x is x to the 1 half. So you can apply the power rule there. And so when we take the derivative, we're going to get Right, the derivative of x to the 1 half is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So we would get 1 half, but again, not x here, because we want to plug in the whole inside. So it's this whole thing with the natural log to the negative 1 half power. If you wanted to, you could just put that as a square root in a denominator as well. Um, and then times the derivative of this inside as I run out of room. Uh, and so we just repeat this part, that stays. Okay, and then the derivative of the natural log part on the inside. So again, what's the derivative of the natural log? Because that's our outside function. So the derivative of the natural log, if we remember, is one over x. And so here we get one over our inside function, which is two x squared plus three x and then times the derivative of our inside function, which is 4x plus 3. Okay, and so that would be our answer for that one. Okay, and so for your first exercise, I want you to compute the derivative of the natural log of x squared minus 3x plus e to the x. So one of the nice results that follows from the chain rule is the generalized power rule. So recall that 
the regular power rule just says that if you take the derivative of x to the n, you're going to get in x to the n minus 1, where right here we're kind of assuming that n is not equal to 0. Uh, and so the generalized power rule says that if you take some function, not x necessarily, to the nth power and take its derivative, then you're going to get n times g of x to the n minus 1. And here, because of the chain rule, right, you're, you're basically thinking of g of x as your inside function and the power function x to the n is your outside. So we multiply by the derivative of g of x. Okay, and so again, this is when n is not equal to zero. So just a, a quick example or two. So if you see something like uh, take the derivative of x to the seventh plus two x squared plus three to the hundredth power, right? I mean, you could do the foiling a hundred times and you know figure that out via the power rule, or you could not do that because that would be horrible. And you could just do the generalized power rule, right? So this is my g of x in this case. And so I'm gonna get 100, keep my inside, bring down the power by one. And then all I have to do is multiply by the derivative of this inside. So seven x to the sixth plus four x, okay? And so that would be your answer there. And maybe one more quick one. Uh, let's take the derivative of the square root of cosecant x plus x. So do a couple of trig ones that we uh, have seen recently. So in this case, right, I want to kind of rewrite this to apply the generalized power rule. So I want to view this as cosecant x plus x to the one half. And so when I take the derivative, I'm going to get derivative of cos or one half cosecant x plus x to the negative one half, and then times derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant x cotangent x, and then plus one for the plus x here. Okay. And so for your second exercise, I want you to take the derivative of secant x plus the natural log of x quantity cubed. All right, thank you for watching.